Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you the weekly analysis in the DIA, IWM, and Triple Q for the week of Monday, November 22nd, Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, you know, before I jump into the analysis, I just want to encourage you to please click like uh, and subscribe. Subscribing to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel will provide you notifications as long as your notification settings are on. Uh, each and every time uh, new content has been uploaded by Wicked Stocks to our YouTube channel. We have daily ETF with the daily SPY report. In December, that will become also the daily triple Qs uh, will be added. The daily IWM will also be added. Uh, I'm not sure if that will happen in the middle of December or not, uh, but it will ultimately be uh, added in January anyway. Um, and so there's that. Please click like and subscribe. It helps me out a great deal. Uh, before I jump into all the line studies on all three of these, I just thought it would be useful to take a look at all four kind of side by side. Um, you've got all four. When I say four, I'm including the SPY. Uh, so the IWM, the DIA, the SPY, and the Triple Q. Uh, and I just think without the line studies, uh, you you can see actually that the IWM, uh, the Russell 2000, the small cap index as they call it, uh, certainly shows more weakness than, for instance, the Triple Q, uh, which is uh, more uh, tech-oriented. You know, uh, I, I think the, the big five, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, and uh, Tesla, uh, maybe that's six, <laughs> they comprise about half of the NASDAQ 100 or the Triple Q, uh, and almost 25%, over 20% in the S&P 500. So it's much more tech-weighted. Uh, with regard to the bottom of the chart, the SPY and the Triple Q. The DIA, the Dow Jones, that index is price-weighted, and they have specifically excluded some of these giants because of how they would skew the index in dramatic fashion. So it does not include uh, Google and Amazon, for instance. So it is, it's not small cap like the IWM upper left, uh, but it is, um, it is less influenced by these tech companies uh, that are just sort of on this ever upward path, it seems. So let's just take a look at the charts themselves. You can see uh, simply, if you're looking at the IWM, uh, you can see that there was this consolidative uh, a framework that occurred for the better part of a year, about nine months of narrow sideways trade. And then you had the big breakout about three weeks ago, pushed to new all-time highs. The following week, we put out a new all-time high and then closed negative on the week. And then last week, we closed below the low of that high. That in itself is a sign of weakness. In fact, the week before, you could make a bearish case uh, for uh, the IWM. You can move on actually to uh, the DIA. The same thing, really. It's not as dramatic, but it happened the same way. You had kind of a consolidative framework that didn't exist for, well, uh, about more like six or seven months um, and uh, pushed to new all-time highs. Uh, that high week, uh, fell off, closed negative on the week, and then last week closed below the low of the all-time high. And that in itself is mm, an indication of bearish trade. Uh, now, it's not inevitable. It's just that is sort of the, the way I think you can read the bar chart. If you move on to the SPY, the SPY last week put out an all-time high and settled at an all-time high by a hair. Um, but it still did it. So last week's settlement was the highest weekly settlement the SPY has ever uh, elicited, and it also put out a new all-time high on Friday at 470.94, uh, uh, taking out the previous week's high, or the week, was it two weeks earlier, of 470.65. Anyway, and then on to the Triple Q. I mean, the Triple Q, after a couple of weeks of apparent hesitation, uh, put out an all-time high and settled not far off those highs. So, uh, you know, there's that. Um, I'm going to be breaking these down now into the line studies and so forth and so on. And I just wanted to compare that, you know, just looking at the bars themselves, you can make a case that the IWM and DIA are in trouble right now, at least near term. Now, I, I'm not uh, suggesting that we have any long-term bearish tendencies in these. I do think, though, that um, several weeks of heavy trade into early, maybe later December, and I'll get to that actually right now. Let's talk about the DIA. I like to go uh, DIA, IWM, and Triple Q in that order. Uh, you can see here, now here are the line studies. Uh, and, uh, you know, rather than just a consolidated framework, you can see that this market settled above a channel top 
uh, that this week is at 364.10. I did that three weeks ago. It held the following week to the downside. Uh, but last week we broke the channel top and once again we settled below the low of the high of 359.38. So that area is our resistance this week and below which this market remains heavy. I think selling pressures or let's just call it uh, long liquidation can continue to play out. I do think there's some longs that were trapped in the DIA and IWM, and I think that could fuel a bit of a sell-off, not necessarily a dramatic fashion, but certainly add weight to this market as we move into December. Um, and if we could just take a look at the long-term channel bottom, I think this is probably the target that you can expect. We may go lower, but I think this is what we can expect over the next week or two. Uh, 348.56, that long-term channel bottom actually held nicely six, eight weeks ago. For several weeks, we tested it. We came off it nicely. And uh, the channel top, by the way, is at 394.66. So, you know, holding above 348.56, an area that I'm expecting to be tested over the next week or two, so long as the Dow continues holding below that 360.14 former channel top. Uh, 348.56 can contain monthly, possibly quarterly selling pressures. Although, um, you know, if this thing continues to, to show weakness, we could violate 348.56. And not all hope is lost, by the way. I think then we have another week or so of continued bearish trade down to the 341.03 channel bottom. And that is just as meaningful as 348.56 because, you know, we could test 341.03. And that's this week's channel bottom. Uh, it can contain quarterly selling pressure. So I'm, you know, I, I'm more confident actually in 341.03 in its ability to contain selling, say, through Q1. And once tested, we can rotate upward and within a couple of months or less push on and up to new highs. Um, and then we'll just take that one week at a time, of course. Not unless we settle below 341.03 do I see the Dow or the DIA in serious trouble as we continue into January, February of next year. But until then, you could just say, for instance, the 341.03 all the way up to 348.56 is good bottom-picking territory. And I think at the very least, we can expect 348.56 over the next week or two of activity. Now, upside, where do we uh, sort of get back into a more neutral to bullish uh, framework? And that would be um, not only closing above 360.14. Now, that would be a neutralizer for sure. And then where does this actually tip north again? Where can we expect the market to show a more constructive dynamic as we move into January and February? And that would be a settlement this week above the high settlement price from a few weeks ago of 362.87. So, you know, at the end of this week, if this market rallies and closes Friday above, th wait, no, is Friday... I think we're open Friday. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> this is Thanksgiving week. So um, if we close above 362.87 on Friday or at the end of the week, um, then I think that this market shows a constructive dynamic. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised then within several months, uh, end of Q1, uh, reaching that 394.66 channel top where we can top out on a quarterly basis. So let's move on to the IWM. IWM, very similar setup. You had this consolidative framework uh, that is represented by that longer-term horizontal structure this week at 238 even. Now, I threw in the 238.34 just to show that there was a convergent channel formations, that nearer-term rising channel top. We settled below both of those last week. We also settled below the low of the high, which is 236.31. So, you know... I'm just going to say that the 236.31 up to 238 even area is the ceiling in the IWM this week and into December, and below which uh, this index should continue easing south. Um, you know, can we get down to 214.22? We certainly may, uh, a three to five week possibility that would put us into late December. But on the way down, there is a respectable support at 226 and a quarter that just might snag selling through December. So, um, you know, I'm going to say that this failure to follow through on that buy signal 
and the subsequent settlement back below this area should at least yield 226 and a quarter. And that may actually be in reach this week where we could bottom out into possibly through December and from there turn higher uh, to new highs uh, by the end of December perhaps. But if we close below 226 and a quarter, then the 214 and a quarter formation becomes a one to two week objective, I think, with present volatility. 214 and a quarter, very capable of absorbing selling through Q1. And, um, you know, once tested, we could stay trapped in that consolidated framework once again for weeks on end. But I think uh, we could also turn up uh, and test the channel top at that point in time, which would be in the 250s. Uh, but there's no point in even illustrating that right now because it's, it's only a trend line across those tops. It's not a channel top yet until or unless we actually test that 214.22 channel bottom. So that kind of covers the downside. Let's talk upside for the IWM this week. You've got the 238 former channel top that we settled below. That is resistance. And once again, very similar to the Dow, um, this whole sort of emphasis on uh, buy signal failure and the heaviness that it should bring sort of neutralizes if we can get back up and over 238 even. I think even closing a day this week above 238 even would sort of neutralize that tempo. Uh, but I really don't feel confident in uh, playing the long side uh, into Q1 for the IWM until it can settle at a new high settlement. So if this week this index rallies, this fund rallies, and closes Friday, the end of the week, above 241.81. Then I think we've got, once again, longer-term bullish continuation. And I know I'm sort of swinging for the fences here. There are other formations and, and things that we can I could note here, but this is sort of broad brushstroke, and there's no point in, in outlining those. Uh, this is just the big picture. So if we close above 241.81 this week, then yeah, I think that that 292.25 channel top becomes a realistic objective at some point next year. Uh, whether that takes three to five months and puts us into uh, late Q1, early Q2, or all the way into later part of next year is a tough one to obviously ascertain at this point in time. Finally, uh, the NASDAQ. I'm going to show a brief chart of the SPY, by the way, the weekly chart. But the NASDAQ, um, like the SPY, is actually testing meaningful longer-term resistance. Uh, resistance that could contain buying through the rest of the year at 407.93. And I say testing because we didn't test it to the very tick, but we certainly pushed within 1% of it a couple of times over the last few weeks. It is a ceiling of resistance. So there's a certain, you know, there's a certain irony here, uh, given the fact that, uh, you know, I just showed at the beginning of this video how, you know, the NASDAQ is pushing to new all-time highs and it had nothing to had it had nothing to do with um, closing below the low of the high or any of that stuff that we saw in the IWM and the DIA. It's a completely different uh, beast, if you will. But it's still testing a meaningful resistance that can contain buying, um, you know, through the rest of the year. And from here, we can trade south uh, into later December. We don't have a sell signal per se. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, let's take a look at the SPY because it's a similar dynamic. It's not a channel top, but it is a long-term trend line that's performed well since the September high. Um, and in fact, you could even go back earlier when it was first formed uh, back in um, uh, the spring of this year. But it has been containing buying pressures now uh, for a couple of months. Let's just give it that. Uh, we've rallied to within 1% of it uh, a couple of times. Um, it's at 477.07 this week. It is sort of the, the ceiling right now uh, for the SPY. Can contain buying through December, perhaps. And from here, uh, the SPY still remains susceptible to bearish rotation. Now, I'm not going to get deep on the SPY analysis because I put this out on a daily basis with the daily SPY report. And you can just sort of watch that to see what's going on. But I just wanted to make the point that both the SPY and the Triple Q are in a very similar uh, structure in that they are hovering just below long-term resistance and still susceptible to falling off into later December. So the 407.93 formation, once again, able to contain buying through December. And from here, we could, over the next month or two, fall back to 355.29. Uh, I don't have an indication of that. That would come FYI this week if we close below 391.21. So 391.21 is able to contain weekly selling pressures. 
Um, and, uh, you know, it is based on a very, just the last three weeks is actually based on last week's high. So, you know, if we push on and up to new highs in a meaningful way this week, that 391.21 uh, has to become recalibrated. Uh, but, you know, if we open several of unchanged on Monday and begin easing back a bit in the week, 391.21 is a valid support level all week long, can contain weekly selling pressures. But if we close below it, it would be, in my opinion, the, the downside tipping point. Uh, through December. And then the next um, three to five weeks or so, I would expect 355.29, uh, which is a meaningful channel bottom that could contain selling through Q1. Um, let's talk about the consequences of closing above 407.93 because there's uh, every reason to believe that that may well happen given uh, the sort of the dynamic that's been playing out with the triple Q. Um, and if so, I would anticipate 451.81, that longer term channel top. Uh, I think that that's probably a nearer term target than three to five months. I think uh, more like two to three months. It could be even sooner. There is a steeply rising short term channel top right now. And this needs to be recalibrated on a week by week basis based on what's happening on a week by week basis. But right now, if we push higher sort of out of the gates early this week and, and, um, and really don't back off and then settle the week itself above 407.93, then that 422.75 formation rising at a pretty steep rate becomes a one to two week target where we could top out quite easily on a weekly basis, possibly for several weeks as we push up against it. But you know, just so you know that if we close above 422.75 at the end of any week, then the 451.81 channel top is more like a, I don't know, a two to three week target perhaps where we could top out on a quarterly basis through Q1 into Q2 and possibly longer as the year plays out next year. Um, I think that that's really all that needs to be said. I've said a lot here today. Um, please click like, please click subscribe, watch that daily spy report. The daily triple Q will start on Monday, December 13th, the IWM uh, not long after. And uh, that's all I've got for this week's DIA IWM and triple Q. You have a great week.